Hi, I'm Angela Fair. In this video, we're going to take this photograph and turn it into this painting. This section of the video is where I share the sketch tutorial on how to do a pencil sketch of our reference photo. If you wanna skip the pencil sketch and go straight to painting, just click the card at the top corner of the screen and uh, you'll head straight to where we start painting. The first challenge in painting any object is really learning to outthink your brain because we have this thing that we do and we're trained to do it from chill uh, from the time we're children to reduce everything to symbols so that's why we start uh, when we're small drawing houses that are squares with triangles on top and lollipop trees and uh, everything gets reduced to something that's symbolic uh, that we've been trained to identify and that's not a bad thing but it does mean that when you start learning to paint um, it can be a little bit hard to get past that tendency to reduce everything to symbols. And so we see a building like this and we might immediately start thinking again rectangles and triangles, uh, squares and triangles, rather than really looking at the shapes that we see and the angles and the relationship of all the shapes to each other. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit more preparatory work than I ordinarily would do in my own studio practice. Now, we could have a conversation about the positioning of the barn in the photograph. I like the way this photo is composed. Uh, this is a photo I took myself, so I don't have to worry about any kind of copyright issues, uh, which is something you should be aware of if you're sourcing images off the internet. Please do become familiar with copyright law uh, and your limitations for how you use of images that are sourced off the internet. Because this image is composed well, we've got a nice balance of where the barn is positioned. It's not dead center in the, in the, on the page. Uh, it's a little bit off to the side. This tree kind of balances it out. We've got a little bit um, less than two thirds of the image's sky. I could decide to crop out some of the snow at the bottom to make that, uh, to have a little bit more sky here, uh, which is one thing that I might do just to make my composition a little bit stronger. It often works if you plan it in thirds. But right now we're gonna focus on not the positioning of where everything is, but just the shapes of the barn itself. I know that if I get my proportions wrong, uh, dramatically wrong especially, uh, even in a loose painting, uh, having your proportions off can really make your painting feel uh, just kind of jarring and not, not comfortable for your viewer. Uh, they're gonna see it. So we're gonna just work on doing a little bit of sketching and I'm gonna start with the roof line. It's a nice straight line, but it is angled just a little bit. And I don't spend a lot of time sketching. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to draw a little bit bigger uh, than I would uh, ordinarily, just because we're focusing on the barn here. I want to sketch it out and practice it before I do my, my serious version here. Um, there's a little bit uh, obscured there in the corner, just with the snow in the way. So we have a little bit of leeway there as to how we're going to paint um, our barn. And I think I've already pitched the roof just a little bit too steeply. So we're going to try and pitch it a little bit shallower here. Um, sketching really lightly. And one thing I always look for when I'm drawing a building is that my lines are parallel to each other. Unless this barn is old and falling down, I'm going to see that all the horizontal lines of the roof should be parallel with that roof line. And uh, same thing here, I'm angling here. This angle should be very close to the same angle. Now I'm gonna drop down and it's not quite straight down, but it's pretty close. So I wanna get that right. I wanna estimate it's a little bit longer. Um, this strip is quite narrow. This strip of, of roof is a little bit longer. I'm going to just, or a little bit wider. And I'm going to go straight across here and then drop down again for my walls. Um, the line of the wall is a little bit inset from the edge of the roof on this side. I haven't worried about this uh, little lean-to part. I'm going to do that last. And then this uh, line on this side where the roof comes down doesn't parallel this one because it's going the opposite direction, but the angle should still, the pitch should still be basically the same. And a little line there. And then the wall. 
we have a fence in the waist and the snow so we don't really see the bottom of the barn where it touches the ground so I might just sketch in you know those piles of snow and a little bit of fence here and the fence comes across just as a line straight through the painting and I'm not using a ruler I want it, the lines to be fairly organic feeling we'll talk about that in a minute and I'm not going to draw all the lines of the all the fence boards I'm just going to draw a line representing the top of the fence and a line representing the bottom um, just to get yeah I think that works and now we'll go back and find our um, little side entrance lean-to roof here and what I want to do is instead of starting on the left side and moving across to the right I'm going to start in the middle so that I can get that little peak again which looks like it's pretty much the same level as this line I'm looking for how all the shapes relate to each other and if I can do that accurately enough my image my my barn should look believable and then so we've got a little V shape upside down V then we have on the left side here a little line where the edge of the roof connects to the building we've got all kinds of piles of snow that accumulate here on the roof and it's higher on this side down here it goes to thinner line I think that's something like that and we've got some lines and marks there that we're not going to worry about and another thing we don't want to do is obsess over minor details at this stage we do have a horizontal line as a support for that roof and then we have the shape of the door which is quite important and there is a little bit of a line where we can see the bottom of this side of the roof touching the building and I know that uh, the more detailed my drawing is the more it will feel like a kind of a paint by number when I go to paint it and I actually don't like that I don't want to do paint by numbers I want to feel relaxed enough to paint loosely and let the color flow so I'm going to try to keep it loose while still getting those details in I'm going to do the crisscross here just represented by a thin line I'm not going to do both sides of the boards or anything like that just get the suggestion of that shape in over on this side we have again another line where the top of the barn connects to the lower half of the barn um, there's a couple little lines here and there and then we have a door here and the thing I need to remember with the door is the bottom of the door should line up with this line that um, represents where those where the top and the bottom of the barn meet and it might look slightly angled because the barn is moving away from us and again just trying to keep it suggested what else do I need to add now I like to really look and go over because we can have blind spots and sometimes it's amazing when I'm painting how much I miss in that first sketch in that first study and trying to figure out what I'm seeing one thing I want to do is have that edge where the roof comes past the side of the barn it's going to be in shadow when I paint it and so I'm going to put that in there uh, I want to be aware as well that the uh, under this roof line here I'm going to be painting some shadows as well and we'll be thinking about that when we get to that stage now I want to go back I talked about not drawing in those fence boards but we are going to put them in now that we've gotten our main part of our barn organized here and again trying to keep the width fairly consistent all the way across and we have a space about the width of a board and then another line coming across we have vertical posts as well which we'll have to think about in a minute we have our drawing done and I think it would be a good idea to fill it in with some color even though this isn't going to be my main painting I want to have as much information and confidence about what I'm going to paint before I start painting um, one thing I'm going to do actually is place uh, some lines to represent those trees not much but just enough so that I can erase the pencil marks there I would encourage you to do as much erasing as possible before you start painting because it can be very hard to lift pencil marks 
uh, after you have paint on the paper.